Hello and welcome to this review of BIF and X funding, or it's going to be also partially a tutorial. Let me give you a quick overview of what I'll talk about in this video, what you can expect. I'll talk about the mechanics of how you use the site. I'll even discuss a little some strategies that I would use to earn interest on the site. And that should give you an idea of what kind of returns you might be able to expect. I'll also discuss where those returns come from. If you make 14, 15%, where does that come from? Who is paying the other side of that? I'll discuss that. Then partially connected to that, I'll discuss the risks you take using this site. How safe is your money? How it can be lost? Because of course, money can be lost in many ways. Um, I'll even get into how safe the site itself is because there is a significant counterparty risk using Bitfinex. To jump there to the end, they are currently being under investigation by the New York Attorney General. So that I do take into account and put that as a significant risk. But to save you watching the rest of the video, I will give you my general impressions now. There are risks using this site, but the rewards are significant and they do just about outweigh those risks, at least for me. And if after watching this video, you are looking to sign up to Bitfinex, I do recommend you use an affiliate code. I have some in the description below, but if you do not use mine, please use somebody's affiliate code because you yourself will get reduced fees. I, I will get a reward if you use mine, which you yourself will get a reduced fees. Um, do not use any cryptocurrency site really without getting these reduced fees that are available through affiliate codes. And there's plenty in my description below if you want to use them. Also, if after watching this video you like it, please like, subscribe, all that usual stuff. Now let's get into it. You can see the Bitfinex website on the screen at the moment. This is on the funding page already. Let me re-click into it. I'm in a demo mode because I don't want to give out my own personal details. So the first thing, you'll need to transfer money onto this site. Your money will appear in one of your wallets. That can be your exchange wallet, your margin wallet, or your funding wallet. You need to move it into funding if you want to fund. It's as simple as that. If you have um, Bitcoin and you want to fund US dollars, you'll need to exchange it for us. You'll need to sell one for the other. So the simple mechanics of lending are this. You have a, a funding form here. You need to put in the rate you're looking to get, and you can see the history of the rates here. This is a one day candles. So you need to put in the rate you're looking to get. Let's see, the current rate is 0 0.017, but it go, goes up and down. So let's say 0 0.03, 0 0.03. You'll then need to put in the amount of money. I'm in the US dollar section. This is the most common one on Bitfinex. The amount of money, maybe you want to loan out $5,000. And then the period of days. Now, this the minimum is two days and the maximum is 30 days. So you want to pick a time between there. I recommend two days usually. You get your money back then nice and quickly. So when can you get your money back? Let me discuss that. If I were to lend this out 5,000 uh, at this percent for two days, you might get your money. You're guaranteed to get your money back after two days. But you may get it back earlier than that. You cannot get it back earlier if you want. It would only be the person who took the loan from you. They can, they have the option to pay it back early. Now, you have one other option here. You could also put down FOR. Now, that will cut off um, the rate here. That, that rate is no longer up to you. That will be decided by Bitfinex. That, that rate uh, can, cannot be seen too easily. Let's see if we can zoom out of the order book here. We'll often see a large amount. Here it is here. I zoomed out a couple of times and had to play around with the position, uh, precision, sorry. Um, and here is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.045. So your, your loan will be put into this pile along with other people. Now you can see there's 70, about $80 million being lent out there. Now the problem with this is it might go three or four days before you get into this loan. But as you can see, the rate for this loan at 0 0.045 is much higher than the current one. So if you put in at 0 0.3, you uh, 0 0.03, you might get a lent out within an hour. But this you might have to wait days, but you would get a larger return for it. Also, if it was lent out for a long time, this rate will move. If you put the rate in yourself, it will not move. It will be locked in for that two days, for that 30 days you put it in. That'll do, that is the rate each day you will get. Whereas this rate can move up or down. This is, I would consider this the easiest way to do it. Put down FFR, put your money, and walk away, come back in a year. But I don't know if I'd consider it the best way. Personally, how I would do it, how I do use this site, I like to uh, keep an eye on these graphs each day. 
I lend out some money at, uh, for example here, I would be looking at a, a point where my minimum amount, amount I would get each day, and that, that would be around 0 0.03 here. I would put lend out maybe one third of my money at this point. I'd then look for some general peaks here, and again, I'd lend out another one third of my money at 0 0.05. And then I'd look for more less common peaks, and I'd lend out another one third of my money. So that would be up here at 0 0.09, for example. Now that means a lot of my money does often be sitting in my account not being lent out. But when I do get a spike, when a spike does happen in the rates, I lend this out for uh, much higher amounts. And these higher amounts up here, I would usually put these in for 30 days and hope somebody kept the loan open for those 30 days. I personally think that returns a bit more than the FTFOR. Doing this, I tend to get returns between 10 and 20% in a year. Any given day or week, your returns can be as high as 50%, 100%, uh, 3, 400%. Now that's annualized. You will not get 3, 400% in a few days, but you will get as high rates that annualized, if they stead going that way, would be 3, 400% over the year. But they do never, they never stay that way. For example, here, this period of time, for these few days, the rates were sky high at about 0.1% every day. If you work out what that is over a whole year, that's nearly 50% returns. But of course, the rate doesn't stay that high. But if we go back a bit, there is occasions of much higher rates. You can see if I zoomed out more, here was a peak up to 7% every day. Now that was a bit ridiculous, but it does happen from time to time. I would say also these loans do not do not get um, held for too long. But let's look for a, a period here of uh, really high rates uh, if we get uh, get rid of the really big ones there we still get a few days where the rates are staying above 0 0.2 0 0.2 annualized would be well over a hundred percent and rates staying over 0.5 if it's dead this high for an entire year you would actually get 600 percent returns now they are ridiculous like i said what i would think you would expect is between 20 and uh, sorry between 10 and 20 percent if you manage um, if you manage the rates yourself, if you're careful how you use them, 10 and 20% is the rates I sort of get. Now that brings me to the number one question I always get asked, where does this money come from? Uh, because people are always doubtful and rightly so. If somebody tells you they can get you 10, 20%, I would like to know, well, who is losing 10 or 20%? Because that is the only way this can happen. And uh, where that's coming from is from derivatives here, from trading. Uh, you can see down here, margin. Uh, people are trading with margin. So what that means is, let's say someone has $5,000. They put it onto Bitfinex and they want to buy 10,000. They want to buy one Bitcoin. They want to buy $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. What do they do? They need to borrow $5,000. So they will borrow $5,000 from us and buy that one Bitcoin. They now have twice the amount of Bitcoin that they would have been able to afford. If the market goes up, they will reap pretty good rewards. They've reaped twice the rewards they would have otherwise. But if the markets fall, they'll lose twice as much. That means if Bitcoin were to fall half, let's again, let's assume Bitcoin is at $10,000 right now, it's not unfortunately, but if it fell down to $5,000, they would have lost $5,000. Even though Bitcoin didn't go to zero, they would have lost all of their money. At that point, they would get bankrupt, but there should still be $5,000 left to pay you back. Now, there is a risk there. I will talk about that in a, in a moment or two. But for now, let's just stick with the margin trader. They, for that loan of $5,000, they were so sure the price would go up, they were willing to pay high interest rates. And they were, they were the people paying that 10, 20, or like I've said, up to 100, 600% on some days. They are willing to pay those kind of interest rates for that loan. Now, I do not um, suggest that's a good idea. In fact, I would usually suggest that's a bad idea to use margin, which is one of the reasons I like to use the other side, which is what we're doing now. We are lending to them. We are gating from their loss. But as hinted at there, there are risks to that. There are still risks to us as the lender. But I think first I'll discuss the fees because there's really two ways I can lose money is how I like to think of it. Um, I'm paying fees and I'm taking risks. So let's first look at the fees. They're a bit more simpler to understand. Um, here is the fee section on Bitfinex for margin funding. 
it's quite simple. They take 15% of any money you generate. So if you uh, if you lending out that five thousand dollars, they do not take 15% of that five thousand. If you were with that five thousand, maybe you made one dollar of interest over a week or two. They will take 15% of that. So for that one dollar you made, they will take 15 cents. It's quite a bit, but it is competitive to other websites, I must say. But I would also like it to get lower. I would love more competition in this space, and this number could get lower and lower. For the eagle eyed out there, you might see 18% here. What is that? That 18% is if you offer your loan out at a hidden rate. That means they cannot see it on this order book. Lots of people will use bots. They will look at the order books. They will try and get cheap loans. And putting a hidden loan out there will keep, well, keep it hidden. And this can improve your returns. I personally don't use it, but I am willing to hear an argument why it should be used. But I'm, I guess I'm cheap. I don't want to pay the extra 3% um, fee. Although 3% over the 15%, it doesn't seem that much. And maybe I should start consider using it. Okay, that's all the boring stuff out of the way. That's the fees out of the way. Now let's get to some of the risks. Bitfinex themselves actually spell out some of the risks. The next one I'd like to talk about is that possibility. That person who took a loan out. The price fell to 5000 and Bitfinex would then automatically liquidate it. They would sell what, what Bitcoin they had left or what um, whatever coin they had left and change it back into the original currency they borrowed from, and they would pay you back. Now, what happens if the market fell from 6000 down to 4000 really quickly? How would they manage that? So what Bitfinex does, they actually, first of all, they sell you off at around 5100 5050 I'm not sure the exact numbers. But they will sell that person a little early. They'll even charge them a large fee, a 5% fee. Go back to the um, uh, fees here. They say here 5% uh, fee will be charged um, when they're trying to get them out of that position. But it can still move much faster than that. It can rush right past that sell point and there will not be enough to, to pay you back. Now Bitfinex, they take care of that most of the times. Or in fact, all the times in their history they have taken care of. I'm sure it has. Actually, I, I think it says here it has never happened before. Yes, it says here in, in the event, and this has never happened before, that the market falls too fast. Um, they have algorithms to slow it down. So it's never happened. And they do say they are willing to cover some of the losses. Uh, but if it does happen where a lot of people are liquidated, a lot of funding, there is not enough money, they are not willing to take all the loss themselves and they will pass it on to you. That is a significant risk, even though it's never happened in the history of Bitfinex funding, which is, is significant. That is something I do take into account with this risk. I do take into account that it's never happened. It can happen. There is another website, Polyonics. In fact, they used to guarantee all the, law, all the laws. They guaranteed not to pass it on to you. They changed that guarantee. And shockingly enough, it did happen a few months later for one of the coins. I can't remember which coin it involved, but it was a coin and USDT. And uh, the losses were spread around all funders, even people who weren't affected by it. So maybe I'm the only person that lent out to this one person, but if all the losses were spread equally amongst everyone. Now, there is advantages to that as well. But anyway, that's all the what I would call standard risks are involved. And that's all the risks there were. I would say this is a slam dunk. Get your money onto Bitfinex and then some of it out. These risks do not add up to the 12% returns you can get. But they are not the only risks involved. So let me talk about some of the other risks. First of all, one that affected me personally, 2016, Bitfinex got hacked. A lot of money got stolen. 72 million uh, looks like here. 36% um, of all money on all the site was so despite, I, I believe in my case, none of my money was stolen. I think it was all Bitcoin and I had all US dollars on it. I was lending it out even back then. None of my money was stolen, but it was still spread across all balances on the, on the site. And 36% of my money was taken away. I was hacked. I had lost money. So this was a, a pretty big risk. And it needs to be respected. If it happened once, for all we know, it could happen again. Now, with this said, I do want to point out that Bitfinex gave everyone a token for this money. They gave a token that said, look, we promised to, to equal a, this to a dollar. So they gave me 36% of my money they took away. Let's say that was uh, $2,000. They then gave me 2,000 of these tokens that they promised 
if they if they can, they will make that worth one dollar. Now, I was not convinced, like a lot of other people weren't, and I sold that as quickly as I could for I think it was around thirty or forty percent. I sold that for. Now, I will say within six months, a year, I believe they did pay everybody back. That that was all that losses were got back. So that is that's another good point in Bitfinex's favor. And again, if this was the only thing I knew about Bitfinex. I would still say it's a slam dunk to use this site. Unfortunately, it's not. There's more risk to come. About one year ago, there's been a lot of shady rumors about Bitfinex. A lot of um, people aren't happy with them. A lot of people think there's a lot of strange actions in and around USD Tether. Now, about a year ago, the New York Attorney General started to investigate Bitfinex. This is a massive red flag. Would you put your money in a bank that was being investigated for fraud, that was being invested, that could be shut down at any day. You will have to answer that yourself. But my answer, to be honest, is depends what my returns are. My returns, like I said, are 10 to 20%. So this, I just add this risk in, and it's the most significant risk I see on this site. But for me personally, it comes down that my returns are just about high enough. You will have to answer for yourself if that is true for you. Oh, there's one more risk I guess I left out. Um, I probably shouldn't have, although it's standard across all of cryptocurrency. If you are not in full control of your coins, of your money, it is not your money. Now, I wouldn't say that's fully accurate, but in principle, I think it's worth thinking about. You are not in full control of your money. They are in full control of your money. If Bitfinex is fully a criminal enterprise, which I don't believe they are, but if they were, they could at any point turn around and take all the money that is in their wallets and leave with them. That would add up to billions and billions of dollars. Again, I do not think this is a massive risk, but it is a risk. It is something that you need to consider. If you're, as soon as your money leaves your wallet, it is not fully in your control. You are taking a risk. So while I say I do use this site, I do, would like to point out one uh, thing I do. I do not put all my money into this. Now, I mostly lend out US dollars. I do not lend out uh, other cryptocurrencies because I do not think the return is big enough for some of these risks I have mentioned. So the US dollars that I do lend out, where they come from is they are the that is the money that I'm not willing right now to buy cryptocurrency with. I do actively trade cryptocurrency. At any given point, I'm not fully invested. So that is the money that I am not invested right now into cryptocurrency. What I do with that is I split it into three. One third of it I do trust to Bitfinex and I lend it out here and get those high returns. Another one third, I trust to another website called Binance, and I get returns from there, about a seven to 9% returns. And another one third, I keep in my own wallet. I keep nice and safe, so that way I've spread my risk around multiple different ways. You'll have to ask yourself, is that enough of a spread for you, or do you wanna spread your money around other ways or do other things with it? I'm hoping just to have given you some information about Bitfinex, how to use the site, why I use the site, what you can do with it. So I hope this review slash tutorial has helped in some way. Like I said earlier, if you do like this, please like and subscribe. If you are interested in signing up to Bitfinex or any of those other cryptocurrency sites, I do have affiliate links in the description below. And I know I already said it, but please do use an affiliate link. It does not have to be mine. Use somebody's affiliate link. Ask your friends if any of them have one. You will get reduced fees. It is crazy to use a site without reducing your fees. Okay, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And thanks for watching and have a good day.